We're going to be talking today about, um, I think it's going to be a very powerful subject, but this is really the secret to everything. And we're going to be talking about how to seek the presence of God and how to bring the presence of God in, into your life. And I'm going to start with three scriptures and, um, and then we're going to get right into this. The Bible says in Exodus 10, 22 and 23, and Moses stretched forth his hand toward heaven and there was a thick darkness in all the land of Egypt. But all the children of Israel had light in their dwelling. So you had darkness in the world, but light in the camp of God. Darkness in the world, light in the camp of God. Philippians 2.15, it says, So that no one can criticize you. Live clean, innocent lives as children of God, shining like bright lights in a world full of crooked and perverted people. And right now we're in a world of crooked and perverted people. And so Jesus said in Matthew 5.14 that you are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. So again and again in the scripture, we find that the church is the light of the world. The church is the city on a hill. That's the city on the hill that those in darkness can look up on top of that hill and say, that's where we go to change our lives. If our family's in a mess, go to the light. If my life, it's like, it's like somebody, a wanderer that's wandering in the dark and they're, 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 they're hurting and they're lonely and they're empty and they're looking for shelter. Where do they go? They look for the light. And that light in the darkness is the church. And so I want to talk to you today from the subject, and we're on a new series in our church, The City That God Loves. The city that God loves is the church, because the church is that light on the hilltop, is that city on the hilltop, is the light in the middle of a perverted and crooked generation. That's the church. And so before we get into it, uh, I'm going to introduce a few people. We got Santa Fe Springs, we have Downey Minerva, we have Lorraine from La Puente, and this is a neat one. Jose from Southgate, but we have Melissa M. I want to give you a shout out uh, all the way from uh, Oahu, Hawaii, which I love Hawaii. Hawaii is awesome. Let all my friends and family know in Hawaii about the podcast. Uh, we got Jose from Irvine. Uh, we got Elizabeth from Fullerton, Manny from Bell Gardens, uh, George from Santa F Santa Fe Springs, Temple City, Baldwin Park, South Whittier. Adrian from Norwalk, we have Uptown Whittier, we got Downey, La Habra, all, all over the region. Oh, here's Tina uh, from Oklahoma, Robert from Alhambra Industry, Covina, Priscilla from Fontana, Carlos from Downey, uh, we got Cerritos, Arcadia, oh, Balboa Peninsula, Mario Diaz, we have um, Azusa, so so many people tuning in from all over, San Jacinto, that's quite far, so it's going to be a powerful program. I want you to say that out loud with me. Oh, we got Watts, come on, so send your question in, questions in as we continue today's podcast. Now, the city that God loves, that's the light, the, hit, the, the light on the, that hilltop, the city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. That's the church of Jesus Christ. And number one, you know, in the house of God, we have to keep the fire of hunger and worship burning in God's city. But not just in God's city, in our own lives. But in the book of Revelation, God begins to address the church. And he tells the church, um, look, somebody's actually at LAX. Come on, Nancy. He says, I know your deeds. I know your hard work. I know your perseverance, which is pretty good. Then he says, you have persevered and have endured hardship for my name, and you've not grown weary. But then he goes on to say, but yet I hold this against you. Now, we don't want the Lord to hold nothing against us. Amen? Because we want, we, we, we just don't want that. We love the Lord. So, it, so then he goes on to say, because you have forsaken the love that you had at first. Then he goes on to say, consider how far you've fallen. Repent. Turn around, go back to what you used to do, do the things you did at first. If you don't do the things you did at first, then I will come and remove your lampstand, your light from its place. So he's talking about hunger for God. He's talking about worship. He's talking about the desire that we need to have 
for the presence of God in our lives. The Bible says that those that hunger and thirst for righteousness shall be filled. And so there, there, there needs to be a hunger in the church. There needs to be a hunger in our lives for the presence of God. That God is number one in our lives. I've been talking a lot to the church about this, about how God needs to be number one because, because in order for us to be the light on the hill, in order for us to be in the world but not of the world, to be in the middle of a crooked and perverted generation, and right now things are, in my lifetime, I've never seen what we're seeing now. Things are more crooked and perverted and twisted and confused. They're beyond what we've ever even thought of, where people saying, Black is white and white is black and up is down and down is up. And it's just crazy in the middle of it. God says to us, I want you to continue to be my light. But in order to be the light, in order to be that city on the hill, then Jesus Christ has to be our first love. We can never lose that. We can never compromise that. And so some of the ways I think we can lose it is allowing the cares of this world to come in. And and we all have cares to deal with. You know, we have in the sense, and, and don't get too spiritual. This is stuff that you and I have to deal with. We have, we have, if you're married, you have married cares. If you're a parent, raising children in this day and age, um, that's a, that, there's cares behind that. Um, bills, finance, debt, health, all these cares that we deal with, the, these are real things that you have to deal with. But but if you're not careful, these things can can so overwhelm us and consume us that it, it, it sucks the life out of our relationship with God. And then we end up living like the world lives, depressed like the world, no joy like the world, no purpose like the world. Because we allowed the things that the world goes through, that defines them, that takes their energy, their life, we've allowed those cares to take our lives. Instead of going to God on a daily in His presence and casting our care on the Lord. That's why He says, don't worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow, tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Each day has enough problems to deal with. And so, and so He says, don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow's going to take care of itself. Tomorrow's problems will be there. Tomorrow's cares will be there. No, today you seek first the kingdom of God. Today you put God first. Today you lay every burden, every care, every anxiety, every stress, every worry, you lay it at the feet of the, of, of the cross. You lay it and you give it to the Lord. Cast your care on the Lord because he cares for you and me. Another thing that could choke out that, that love is the desire for other things. And that's that's simply the, the lust of the flesh. You know, uh, 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 and, and people think lust of the flesh is just, you know, sex and, and they limit it to that. But it, it's all of the lust of the flesh. And they, it comes in. And again, that can take that love, that hunger, that first love away from us. It could rob it. And we don't want to do that. So we have to protect and guard ourselves from this perverted generation. We have to guard our eyes. We have to guard our ears. We have to protect our hearts. We have to live in such a way where we're not open and susceptible to be knocked off guard by the enemy. No, we're eyes wide open. We're smart. We're sharp. We're sober. We're alert. Because we understand that the devil is roaming around like a roaring lion looking for somebody to devour. But he's not going to devour us because we're on our toes. He's not going to devour us because we're in fighting shape. Come on, somebody. So the cares of the world can rob that first love. The desire for other things can rob that first love. Here's another one. The deception of riches can choke our first love. And I'm a big preacher that I believe in. And I'm, I'll talk about this, Brandon, right now. But I, I'm a big one in um, prosperity. Um, uh, when I was going into Bible college, um, we had a lot of teachings about the love of money and the danger of money. And it, it was almost like we got talked out of money, like money was evil. Money was evil. 
And I've learned now, money is not evil. Money is what you call is nebulous. It's not good or bad. It's, it's, you know, it's like beauty is in the eye of the beholder. You know, money is, takes on the nature of what is in that person. And if there is, if, if, if there is a love of money in the heart of a person, then that love of money will choke out the first love. Like how many people have I, over 30 years of serving the Lord, how, I mean, I, I can't even count how many people stop going to church, stop serving God, stop putting God first because they went to chase the almighty dollar. It, in the dollar, it says, in God we trust. But many people say, in money we trust. But the Bible's clear. Don't put your trust in uncertain riches because money's, you know, it's uncertain, but put your trust in the living God who's able to richly give us all things. And so I could really preach on the love of money because I believe in prosperity. Uh, 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 uh. When I was in Bible college, we were taught almost again, Yuli, thank you for giving cash app $200. That's cool. We're talking about money and people are giving. That is a blessing. Because that's one of the ways you break the love of money is giving. That's, the, that's really the only way to break the love of money is through giving. Really. Because Jesus said whatever the money is, the heart is. So we could talk about that maybe in a few minutes. But what I learned, uh, this is good, huh? Come on. And we'll, we'll get to Brandon's question, but I, I'm on a roll. Let's flow. So what I learned in Bible college is almost like you got to be careful because there's a teaching out there that is solid in the sense of it's got scriptures about the danger of money and what Jesus said about money, but it only lives in the New Testament. Because if you go into the Old Testament and the New Testament, you're going to find financial prosperity is a blessing from God. And you, you can't just throw away those scriptures like, I give you the power to get wealth. You know, the blessing of the Lord maketh rich and addeth no sorrow. Bring the tithe into the storehouse and see if I don't open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there's no more room to receive. I've come to give you life and life more abundantly. You know, give and it shall be given. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. And my God shall supply all your need according to your riches and glory. And Abraham was the wealthiest man in all the land. And Job was the wealthiest man in all that. And over and over, you find prosperity coming to the kingdom of God, to the children of God. So we know that it's God's will. And in order for it to come, you got to believe it. So when I was in Bible college and we learned about money, it was almost like we were anti-money. We were anti-wealth. And that's dangerous for my community. Because in my community, one of the bloodline curses that I find in a majority of the people who begin to attend our church, not all of them, but a lot of them is the spirit of poverty. That generations of poverty, generations of barely getting by, generations of nobody going to college, generations of people not even finishing high school. So we have to preach prosperity because we got to break that off people so people can be free in that area, so they can serve God in that area. But the key is when we're teaching prosperity, we got to also teach on the danger of covetousness, on the danger of falling in love with money. Because money will never replace God. Your honey will never replace God. You know, your wife, your spouse, your boyfriend, girlfriend, your kids can't replace God. God is all by himself. And sometimes the world says, and this is what they sell, hey, get this new thing. Get this new whatever. Get this, get this. And they show pictures of a you know, a rich guy, a girl, whatever, on a, on a jet. And then they land and you get in your Rolls Royce. And then you go to your mansion. And then you go to your yacht. And then if you have all this, you're going to be so happy. But the truth is, I know people like that are miserable because they don't have the presence of God in their lives. So again, one of the ways you break the love of money is through giving and through worship. And when you find out that God is number one, you find out that God is everything you need, then you can be blessed and you can manage and handle the blessings of God. Heavy. Well, we just dealt with three temptations. The cares of the world, that's a temptation to, to take that. We dealt with uh, the lust of the flesh and then the deception of riches. These are chokers to the intimacy of God. The choker to the light of the world. Meaning, hey, that's my first love. As long as my first love's in place, I'm the light of the world. But Jesus said, I'll take that light away from you if you 
put other things in front of me. So I don't, I don't want the Lord to do that. So let's talk about Brandon Guzman. He said, how do you overcome addictions under heavy temptation? Now, it's heavy. Um, okay. Now, Brandon, um, it all depends what kind of addiction it is. Um, now, if it's substance abuse, first thing I tell you is probably get some help, meaning get 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 into some kind of counseling, get into a program, um, because in order for me to get free, and I had so many addictions in my life, and these were definitely robbing me of my first love. Um, I had the addiction to methamphetamine. I had the addiction to alcohol, marijuana, LSD, and every other kind of thing there. So I had a lot going on there. So when God freed me, he he literally, for, in my case, he knew I wouldn't make, I wouldn't have made it in my condition. He had to pull me out of my world. And then he had to put me in a world where everyone there was trying to get sober and there was no really an access to drugs. And I, and, and I had to really detox and, and get rid of all of that. And so a lot of times you have to change your environment, change who you're hanging with, change who's speaking into your life. You may have to get rid of your phone and get a new number and change your world because your world is, if you're an addiction, your world is an addicted world and all your relationships are in addiction. So you have to break away and separate yourself from that. The Bible says that God makes a way of escape when there's temptation. My way of escape was putting me in a program. So if there's a real addiction there, um, yeah, I would say that. A lot of guys in the, in the ministry now we're dealing with, um, they're struggling, with, and girls too, they're struggling with pornography. And the way you beat pornography is accountability. Oh, this is going to get good. Come on, somebody. Uh, and you have to, because the phone, like the phone is, like before, in order to break free from pornography, it was easier because you had to be kind of weird. You had to go to like the the, the movie store and there was a black curtain. And then you had to go behind that black curtain if you're 18 and over. And anyone who went behind that black curtain was like a weirdo. So you're like, that's the weirdo guy. So nobody wanted to be that guy. So it wasn't like you could just have it everywhere. But now the pornographers have used this to, to ensnare people, God's people. And this will take your first love. And if that's the addiction, then you need to get accountable with this. You know, your, your Google, your Safari, your, 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 what you're watching online on your computer. You got to be accountable and, and you got to be willing to be accountable and you got to find somebody you can trust that can help you with that. Uh, that's one of the ways you can break that, that addiction. Um, there's addiction to, to unhealthy relationships. Again, it's, I think it all comes down to prayer, the word. Yes. But you also have to have support systems to help you. Um, so that's one of the ways you overcome addictions under heavy temptation. Like Joseph, and I'm going to talk to the men about this a little bit in our conference, but what did Joseph do when he was tempted? Oh, lady came against him to, she wanted to have sex with him. She's like, hey, Joe, what's up? What's up? And he's like, girl, you tripping. And then she attacked him, tried to take his clothes off. And what did he do? He didn't sit there and say, I'm strong, I'm the Lord. No, the boy took off running. So I tell you, take off running, brother. Whatever the temptation is, run for the hills. And then you can ask God for help too when you get out of that thing. Amen, amen, and amen. Come on, somebody. All right, so a super chat. Somebody's looking for a super chat is not available. I think it is, but I'm not sure. Fernando from Las Vegas. I hope this is blessing you guys so far. Again, ask more questions. Now we're going to go right into more. Man, I've already preached for 20 minutes. So, God, I, how many love this podcast? Let me know you love it. And let me know. Comment, make some things like, Pastor, we love it. We want it. We want more of it. And so we'll just keep putting more content out there for you. Again, all you that are supporting, thank you for your generosity. Thank you for your donations. Thank you for your giving. Okay, let's keep going a little bit deeper. In Deuteronomy 4.29, he said, but if from there, now he's talking about from a position where temptation came, they yielded to it. And what happens when sin comes? Death, bondage. So now they're in bondage. And, 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 and he says, but from that place of bondage, if from there, 
you seek the Lord your God, you're going to find him if you seek him with all your heart and all your soul. So it doesn't matter like if you've fallen from your first love. It doesn't matter if you've fallen into bondage. You could turn around today and say, no, I'm going after God. And the beautiful thing is if you draw near to God, God will draw near to you. David said it this way in Psalm 63. He said, oh God, you are my God. I diligently search for you. See that? That's a, that's a lifestyle. And I didn't have that lifestyle. Like I diligently sought methamphetamine like every day. I was a, 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 I was something. I'm not going to say too much. Come on, somebody. I was into that stuff. Every day I was into meth. Every day I was into, into that lifestyle. Every day I was, I was a diligently seeker of it. I was, a, I, was, I was addicted to it. But when I came to God, I learned that God doesn't take that diligence away. He doesn't take that, addic that addiction in the sense of uh, that drive away. He just had to turn my affection. So my addiction went from meth and that lifestyle to the presence of God. And so maybe you're you're in a position right now where you find, you find like, man, I'm in a mess. I'm all jacked up. Listen, you just got to turn your affection. And you got to go after God the way you went after drugs. You have to go after God the way you went after partying. You have to go after God the way you went after money. You have to go after God the way you went after. You go after God the way you went after sin, bro, you'll be a giant killer. And that's the switch that God wants to make in your life today. That today you're going to diligently seek the Lord. And that's a lifestyle. That, that's a, that's a, and, and maybe you say, pastor, I, I, I um, you know, I'm, I'm not, I, I was diligent for a season, but I, but I stepped away and, 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 and I slipped back here and I slipped there. What do I do? You need to go back to God. You don't, don't let condemnation hold you back. You know, Adam fell, Eve fell. And what happened? God shows up in the garden. He's like, where are you? And it says that they were ashamed. They were, they were, they were embarrassed. And God's like, well, I'm looking for you still. And some of you are embarrassed and maybe you've fallen or slipped or whatever. You need to get back to, to God. You need to get back to the house of God. You need to get back to your, 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 your old ways of seeking God. God's not done with you. God's not finished with you. But you got to diligently seek the Lord. And he rewards those who diligently seek him. David goes on to say, my, my soul thirsts for you. My body longs for you in this dry and weary land where there is no water. And then he says, I've seen you in the sanctuary and I gazed upon your presence, your power, and your glory. Don't live another day dry. Don't live another day with cares. Don't live another day with bondage. You don't need to. You don't need to live dry. You don't need to live weary. You don't need to live oppressed. You can live with fire and passion and energy because it comes from the presence of God. You can live with joy today, but it's all in the presence of God. And you're not just going to, Get into the presence of God. You got, you got to fight to get in the presence of God. And you and I have to fight to stay in the presence of God. It, it's not an automatic. It, it, it's a battle. The, the body doesn't want to pray. The body doesn't want to spend time with God all the time. You know, so, like sometimes I'm praying, and if it's a real busy season, well, you know, we'll, it'll take 20, 30 minutes before I can just even clear my mind. But after a while, you break through what I call the flesh realm. And then you enter into that holy place where the presence of God is, where the joy is, where your answers are, where that burden is handed and given to the Lord, where the answers for everything you need are there. The secret to life is in the presence of God. The Bible said in Isaiah 55, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he's near. Let the wicked leave their way of life and change their way of thinking for the Lord is merciful and quick to forgive. Jeremiah said, you will seek me and find me when you search for me. With all your heart, I will be found by you, declares the Lord. Psalm said, 34, I sought the Lord diligently and he heard me and he delivered me from all my fears. I don't know what the fear is you're dealing with, but today that fear ends. Fear of being alone, fear of dying, fear of lack, fear of running out, fear of sickness killing you early, fear in your family, fear in your children. Fear in your relationships. Fear, 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 fear. We break fear in the presence of God. I sought the Lord diligently. So here it is. When you and I diligently seek the Lord, the deliverance from fear comes. I diligently seek the Lord, deliverance from fear comes. So there's not going to be a freedom from fear 
absent from seeking the presence of God. They go together. Because fear can't live in the presence of God. And everything fear produces, torment, dread, oppression, depression, sap you of your energy, sap you of your creativity, sap you of your strength. The devil's a liar. In the presence of the Lord is the fullness of joy. That's why David goes on to say in Psalms 34 and 5 and 6, those who look to him for help will be radiant with joy. No shadow of shame will darken their face. And then he goes on to say, this poor man cried out and the Lord heard him and the Lord saved him from all of his troubles. And I love in Psalms 27, when you said, seek my face, my heart said to you, your face, Lord, I will seek. And I want to focus on this scripture right now. It's found in Psalms 27, 4. I love this scripture. It says it this way. Let me find it here. It says, one thing I have desired of the Lord, and that will I seek. Now, some, Elizabeth asked a question, and um, what are some things you did to stay free after being healed and delivered? Okay, I'm going to give you some secrets, and then we're going to go to this, because I really want to get to this. Um, man, okay, here you go. What are some things you did to stay free after being healed and delivered. I was talking to a, uh, one of our leaders the other day about this, and I said, you know, we're dealing right now with the, the, the ability, because Paul said, um, God and the message, so God is power, and the message he gave us allows people to develop and grow and eventually gives them an inheritance. Now, God has an inheritance for every area of your life, but you have to grow up so you can handle the inheritance. Like the prodigal son, many years ago, we learned in the Bible where he wasn't developed enough to handle his inheritance. But what God does and what the message does, it develops you and I where we can receive our inheritance and, and handle that inheritance. Now, um, so, so that's powerful. Now, when you're talking about an inheritance and God and the message, that means God and our message is changing people's bloodline. So in the Lozanos, there was alcoholism, drug addiction, divorce, early death. I mean, just tons of curses. But because of God and the message, the bloodline in my family changed. So if you trace my family bloodline, bondage, curse, poverty, right? But then here it is 30 years ago and my bloodline changes. And instead of it going down, it starts going up. Everything changes, right? Why? Because here is where I got saved. And now I learned through God's power and his message how to get free and stay free. So all those demons that were bringing the curse, bringing my bloodline down, although their power was broken, and now I have God and his angels working in my life and a new bloodline. So that now we're going up. Well, the Bible says that when a demon leaves, what does it do? It leaves, but it comes back because it wants to get back into that bloodline because that demon thinks that that family is owned by him. So you have to keep that devil out. And the way you keep him out is the way you got him out. You got to diligently seek God and you got to develop a first love. And once you have that first love, if you ever stray from it and you open the door to the demonic again, all you have to do is go back to what you did at first and you're going to find your freedom right there. You got to seek God like you first sought God. Go to church like you first went to church. You were on fire. Do that again and, and that freedom will come back into your life. That's one of the ways that I got free and I stayed free, is always making God number one. And, and it's been years where, 30 years now, it's been 30 years, where there's been times where I left my first love. But I never, I always said when the Lord gave me a message like this, man, I'm back in. Why? Because I don't want to lose my lampstand. I don't want to lose the ground I've taken. I don't, and if you've lost ground, don't be condemned. Don't sit there and like, oh man, I, no, get back up in a sense, like the prodigal son, 
and go back to your father's house. Get back to your first love. Go back after God. You know, some of you have a great call from God for ministry on your life. And you've strayed and you got caught up in the love of money. You got caught up in the desire of other things. You got caught, caught, caught up in all these things. I had one guy that used to go to our church years ago. And I don't want to say too much, but I'll say this. He had a job that was at the Staples Center. And it was like a security guard or something like that. And you could, you just knew God, he, this guy had music. He had a gift on his life. You can just, you just knew God had a call on his life. But you know, he didn't want to give up that job. And, and, and I'm not against the Staples Center. Now it's crypto and all that. That's fine. But you know, there's a strong lust of the flesh in those games. There's a lot of temptation around him. And, and I, and I knew it was hurting. It was affecting him. He wasn't strong enough. But instead of letting it go, he didn't want to let it go because he liked it. He liked that. And he went that route and he never returned. Be wise. If you find yourself in the position right now where you know look, this, this, this job or this environment I'm in is too much for me right now. You need to maybe make some changes because you don't want to have gotten freedom and then went back to bondage. You get your freedom and you keep your freedom. This is powerful what I'm saying. And this is powerful what I'm saying. Um, yeah. And, and I've seen so many walk away from that call. I've seen so many start going and dating the wrong person. And then next thing you know, they're having sex. And then next thing you know, little by little, they stop going to church. And then they go to the world. And they go back to the world. Those familiar spirits. The bloodline curse that was broken is back. And here's the dangerous part. It gets seven times worse. So don't, don't, this is powerful stuff. And I'm going to say this, you're not, you're never neutral. You're either going forward or you're backsliding. Let me say it again. You're either going forward or you're backsliding. You're never neutral. You're either going forward in your love for God. You're going forward in your hunger or you're going back. It's called backsliding. And if you're backsliding, hey, make the adjustments. You know, is it, is it the cares, has cares gotten you? Worry, boom, and you're all, boom. Let's get free. Is it the desire, the lust of the flesh? Let's walk away from that. Is it the love of money? Hey, money won't satisfy you. It's a blessing. It's a, it's, it's a, it's a blessing from God if you have the blessing. But without God, it's nothing. It's nothing. Solomon said, I'd rather be poor with a little and happy than have all this money with the kings and be miserable. I'm not saying God wants you poor, but I am saying, he's telling you right there, money won't make you happy alone. You need the presence of God in your life. And I'm going to close with this. How, oh, this is powerful. Let's, I feel like saying, let's give the Lord a praise. Come on now. <laughs> so, amen, 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 amen. All right. So, Psalms 27, 4 is one of my favorite scriptures. It's King David. It says, and thank you all, all you for your generosity, for your giving, for your blessing. May the Lord bless you hundredfold for it. It said, one thing I have Desired of the Lord. Not two things, not three. One, that will I seek. Now, this is a man who had everything any man could want. He's a king. He's King David. He's got power. He's got wealth. He's got fame. He's got family. He's got everything. He, he's got it all. Yet David says, it's one thing I want of God, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. And the language to behold the beauty of the Lord. It means to meditate on his goodness and to ask him for guidance. That's the, the longing of this great leader. And this is a lesson 4,000 years. This is like a 4,000 year old lesson. Somebody who lived, died, buried in heaven now. But this is a lesson that we can learn today. The devil's a trickster. He'll say, hey, take this care. Hey, hey, take this lust of the flesh. Hey, hey, go after money. Forget God. No. No, we're going to be the light in a crooked and twisted generation. We're going to be a city on a hill. We're going to be people of God's presence. For in the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. At his right hand, there's pleasures forevermore. We're filled with joy. We're filled with the presence of God. God is number one in our heart. God is number one in our lives. We seek first the kingdom of God and everything else takes care of itself. One thing I desire of the Lord 
and that will I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Stay focused. Keep God first place in your life. If you've strayed away, if you've went wrong, if you've went back to your old ways, no condemnation. Get back up. Do the things you did at first. Go after God. And I believe this is the answer to everything in your life. It may not be the answer you wanted. It may not be the, the answer you were looking for, but it is the answer. You are the light of the world. You are a city on a hill. You seek first the kingdom of God. You, you keep your first love with God and you keep growing with God. And we're going to look back at your bloodline and it's going to go up, 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 and up. To God be the glory. I love you. Go ahead and click if you like, subscribe, leave a comment. You can give whatever you feel led to do. There's many ways. There's Vimeo, Cash App, Push Pay. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Until next week, I tell that Pharaoh in your life, his time is up. He has to let my people.